Hello everyone, and welcome to the Under the Cover podcast, second episode of the Under the Cover, okay. Hello everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Under the Cover podcast, where we uncover the grinds of the young minds. Of the young minds. Of the young minds. Now today we have a very interesting topic today, uh, it's a very numbered debate, motivation versus discipline, right? So first things first, what are these words that we're saying? What is motivation? So motivation is a quick burst of energy that you get, like when you see someone richer than you or something pisses you off, or maybe you see some quote on Instagram that's like, you can chase your dreams, you can do it, right? So that's motivation. Motivation is that quick, easy, energetic feeling, and it's not very reliable, right? Because it doesn't always last. It's very quick. It's very short. Maybe it'll last you a day, maybe it'll last you a week, right? That's the motivation. Now... Discipline, discipline is much different. Discipline is the consistency. Discipline is doing what you are supposed to do even when you don't feel like it. So discipline is waking up every day at the same time, working out every day at the same time, getting your work done consistently, um, hitting all your goals, doing everything you want to do consistently every single day, right? And it's hard work. Yes, it's a lot harder than running off that motivation. However, Discipline, I would argue, is more essential for success. So motivation is kind of like a resource or a feeling. You know, it comes and it goes, right? But discipline is more like a skill. So we're going to look into how exactly you can train the skill of discipline and why motivation isn't so reliable because, you know, it it can go away really quickly. So if uh, to start off, I'd, I'd say that everyone has probably heard of 3 a.m. motivation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to get 3 a.m. motivation all the time back in the day, and that was when I was staying up late, like playing video games or whatever or something, right? But then I would just stay up just late enough so the clock would hit 3 a.m., and that's when I would think, man, what the heck am I doing with my life? And it's at that point that my brain started going crazy just thinking about all these thoughts and all the things that I could be doing with my life. So I started, like, like re- I would do research and stuff. Like I would at three a.m. be like, "Man, tomorrow's about to be so productive." Getting man, my push-ups in. It's so crazy because like at three a.m. you do you have this huge burst of motivation to work, but you don't have any energy to actually carry out that work. So it's just like you can't even do anything. So but you have to go to bed tomorrow and wake up and try to and do all the stuff that you had. But the motivation's gone at that point. Yeah. So why do you think that that three a.m. motivation exists? Well, you, you actually did the research. You actually know. But I just think... Um, I, th- I feel like you should just tell them because you know. Right. About theory, theory and motivation. Well, I think that... Well, I just used Google. Yeah, so at least I Googled it, right? And they said 3 a.m. motivation is basically your brain kind of thinks about things on the background. So if you're trying to level up in Fortnite, right? On the, on the, in the background, your brain is constantly like thinking about Fortnite and things like that. So it kind of solves the problem on its own. So during the day, if you're just distracted with a bunch of stuff, then your brain is not going to bring up those thoughts because it's distracted. But once it's 3 a.m. and then you got like, it's just like nothing to do, then your brain's like, all right, these problems that are important to me, getting a dub in Fortnite, uh, improving my productivity. What are you, what are you, what? Huh? Why are you comparing Fortnite to the actual 3 a.m. motivation? I'm just saying, like, if you actually had things that you want, that was, that was a goal of yours. Some people like that's confusing though, because you were playing games all day. <laughs> oh yeah. I what Dale's it. trying to say is right. <laughs> you are distracted the whole day. You're scrolling on TikTok or you're playing games, right? <clears throat> say you want to get in the gym more, right? That's in the back of your mind. You don't have time to think about it because it's overrun by the the you're you're actively playing these games. You're engaging you're engaging your mind, right? So when it's three a.m. and you're awake, lying awake, you're realizing. No, your, your brain just has time to think about these things now. So now you're thinking about it. You're realizing that your life is trash. You now have the motivation, the burst of energy, and the and the, the burning fire. It just got ignited to start working on your life, right? And, um, you know, that's that could be in the form like maybe some people like to drop down and start doing some push-ups or something. Some people like to write out a whole plan of what they want to do with their life. Some people just sit there and deal with it, you know, like... That's that's that three AM motivation, right? Um, right? So the thing was, Fortnite's my, my default example. That's why I went to that. But, yeah, but I see you it. can't always use. That. Yeah, I see. I see how it's confusing. So some other forms of motivation are 
or some experiences that we had is we just get motivated and then we set up a plan for ourselves and then we stick to it for about one week, two weeks, a day, three days, and then we instantly go back to our old habits, right? So we would make a schedule and we would try to do all these productive things, but we just go right back. Do you have any idea why that would happen? We're just not disciplined, right? So our motivation, right? We have this burning desire. We wake up one day, we're like, damn, we got to fix our lives, all right? Okay, let's make this schedule. Tomorrow we're going to, no, yeah, tomorrow we're going to uh, work out. We're going to make up a couple videos. We're going to edit something and we're going to post on Instagram, right? Cool. We're going to do that every single day. We start the first day. We're feeling great. We're like, damn, we were very productive today. Second day. Where we may, you know, we're a little bit less energized. We're still going though. The third day, you wake up a little bit later. You're like, ah, oh, I kind of went to sleep late last night. Give me yourself a couple, couple more hours of sleep. You wake up a little bit later. You get your work done, but it's sluggish. And the last day, you BS yourself, and then you fall back into your old ways, right? So that's the motivation slowly dying down. Think about it like a fire, right? You have this insane burst of fire. You 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 start with a giant flame, and slowly it, it wanes down, and slowly it dies down, right? Then that's when the discipline comes in, because discipline is that little bit of fuel that's keeping it running, right? So you had the you had the oil that made the fire big, right? But now you just you're just relying on the on the wood, right? And that's discipline. You had to keep that that fire burning. You had to be consistent. You got to be disciplined. You have to consistently work and, and complete all your goals right and um there's a saying right i don't remember the saying exactly but the more you win the more you feel motivated right so you if you're disciplined in the beginning because that's very essential you're consistently working hard and then once you start to win once you start to see results you're feeling more and more motivated you have more fuel for the fire you have more wood for the fire right so you started off with the initial burst, you carry it through. Um, when it's hard, you know, you're, you're disciplined and then you slowly get yourself back up and you have a huge flame again, right? So that's why discipline is so important. I don't even, I don't think I answered your question exactly, but that's why discipline is so important. So the thing is, a lot of things in life, right? Like you said, when you get results, you feel more motivated, but what happens is results don't come instantly. They come that's, in like yeah. a delayed amount of time. So what would you say to that, someone who, who's having trouble going through that, that pain period. Right, so yes, that period can be longer or shorter for some people depending on how successful, say, your business model is or something like that. Uh, I'm currently in that, in that phase where I'm not exactly seeing the results I wanna see. However, I'm trying my hardest to stay, to stay consistent, stay disciplined. So for someone that's in that area, um, well, the solution is always hard work, right? If your life sucks and you're not getting anywhere, you got to work harder, right? If you're just starting and you want to start something, you got to work hard, right? If you're if you're in this area, you're in the in between winning and losing, you got to work harder. When you're winning and you're seeing results, you still got to work harder because you want to maximize that, right? The solution is always hard work. And yes, that's hard. And we're going to talk about um how to stay consistent, how to stay disciplined in our experiences. These are a couple of suggestions for us. But it's very important to, to work harder, you know, um, and, and, you know. So the solution keep... to someone who who's struggling to work hard is to work harder? No, the, the, wait, you said someone who's struggling to um, see results. Yeah, like, there's, like someone, someone starts in the gym and then the first week they don't see any progress. So like... I. Okay, so the gym as well, hmm. you should turn, all right. Yes, you need to work harder, but also I have a feeling you're comparing yourself to other people who are on steroids, right? You're on it. You're probably on Instagram scrolling and you're seeing these, these bodybuilders who are, you know, saying, oh, I'm natty. And they're, they're obviously not, they're on steroids and stuff. Or there's people that have been working out longer than you have. They've been working out for five years and they have, a, you know, a good physique and you're comparing yourself you can't just compare yourself like that you have to well obviously set a goal right that you want to get to and then you just can't you can't be discouraged by other people who've been putting in more work than you or have been using the secret juice you know what i'm saying so i would say limit your social media time so that you you don't feel inadequate and feel like giving up you know like certain people are different right 
when I see people on Instagram and that and they're doing better than me, I feel I feel inadequate and I want to put in more work. Other people might see that and feel discouraged because they feel like they're never going to get there, right? So depending on who you are, I'd say get rid of the social media and just continue on your own path because everyone moves at their own pace. Just do your research, figure out what you have to do and stay consistent on that plan. Now, I would argue that the reason why someone would feel upset by seeing things like that, like if you go on Instagram and you see someone who's really big and you get sad and discouraged, it's because you're focusing too much on the results. If you if you if you're always just thinking about the results and, and and focusing on that instead of focusing on the process that it takes to get there, you're not going to feel excited throughout the journey. So for the first like few months of training you might not see any visual results. And that might get you discouraged and you might quit. But someone else who says, I'm gonna do my goal is is yes, my goal is to develop a nice physique, but I'm gonna focus on making sure I get my workouts in, I eat my food, I, I go to bed at a certain time, and they focus on that and they get their their fulfillment from doing those things, then they're gonna be consistent because they get that, that fulfillment, that happiness from doing the work. But if you, if you only get happiness from the results, only get fulfillment from the results, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to go through that that hard work, you know? Right, it's like it's like stairs, right? You can't just look at the top step without looking at the other steps below it, like because you're not gonna be able to jump that high. Um, when you have these little wins, these small wins, these steps, you take it. Say the first step, right? Um, my first goal is to be able to do 25 push-ups in a row. Bam, you hit that, then you have that fulfillment, right? And that's gonna keep you more consistent, right? Your second step, you wanna. Uh, hit your calorie goal if you're hitting that consistently bam you got that and slowly as you go up these steps you have these small wins so you keep going right you have you can cons- consistently have that drive however once you get these small steps you you don't notice but you're gonna get there eventually it's gonna take a while it's gonna take a year or two maybe maybe even three years four years but as you're going up these steps you're eventually gonna reach that top step so it's more productive to go step by step by step setting small goals setting small wins for yourself that way um, you can build yourself up to your main goal, right? So you gotta have your sub goals rather than just trying to get to the that one, that one high step that you obviously can't reach instantly. So I have an example for you: is I have a, a YouTube channel, right? And it's about self improvement. And when I started, I made my first video, and it was pretty bad. You know, it was my first video. And then I go online and I watch these other self improvement YouTubers, and I'm like, man, these guys are so good, like. Their storytelling is on point. They, they, their, uh, the way they speak or the the advice they give, they're so much better than me. I'm like, dang, 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 my videos suck. But that's because I'm focusing on the results, right? The thing is, if I want to get to that level, I have to take those small steps. So what happened was, I uh, I quit my channel and I came back like a few months later, and then I started again, and then I did the same thing. I I made my first video again and I quit because I was comparing myself, and then. A few like a year a year goes by and then I start again but this time I was like alright I'm gonna focus on the small steps I know I'm gonna suck and I'm still gonna suck even after I take these small steps but that's what it's gonna take to get to the top so I decided to just post 50 videos just not not much work into them just trying to get comfortable in the camera because that was like the level the first step the first step is getting comfortable on camera not the first step is not to make a super awesome edited video that has every bell and whistle you know what I'm saying it's just a simple little vlog. I'll just post that. And that's what I did. Now I'm comfortable. And now the next step is for me to actually go and learn about YouTube and figure out how I can make better videos. So that's my second step. So now I'm there. But if I just if I just kept going through that same cycle of just looking at where I want to be and just being sad I'm not that I wasn't there, then I would never make any progress. Right. I personally don't have any experiences with this because whenever I see people and I like compare myself, I just... Um, I, I try harder rather than being discouraged. However, there is this person that I've seen on TikTok um, who was obese, right? And he said, I remember the first video I saw of him was like a year ago. He said he was ready to lose the weight, blah, 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 blah. I saw him a couple of months later and he was he was talking. He was very happy. You can tell in his voice. You can tell in his eyes. He was ex- very excited to share his results because he could, he could hang on a bar for like three seconds. Only three seconds. That's the, that's the type of goals... 
that he said it for himself, yet it made him so fulfilled, right? He could hang on a bar for like three seconds. He could squat and like stand up on his own, right? Those are the type of like little goals that you need to set for yourself. Like, in no disrespect, but he was, he was, he's, he's huge, right? And if his only goal was to just slim down, he might have quit on his journey rather than setting small goals like he did, you know? And I seen him again recently and he's doing a lot. He's doing well. He stuck to it for over a year um, and he's continuing to do so. So that's just the power of the small goals. Yeah, so the lesson there is to appreciate your progress, you know? Yes. It may not be like the, the flashiest, the, the, the nice Lamborghini, but it's just like a few dollars you made. Appreciate that, you know? Because th those steps are, are going to be what takes you to that final goal. Of course. Um, so, yeah. And then that's that's the difference between, like, motivation and discipline and how you can stay a little bit more consistent on your, um, and discipline. But, you know, another great way to stay uh, disciplined is, you know, what we personally use is scheduling, right? Now, scheduling, you, you said that some people say, oh, that's boring. You're doing the same thing every day, even though them themselves would scroll on the same videos every day. But, you know, that's not important, right? Scheduling is very, is very good because... Scheduling is when you do the same thing at the same time every day. Right. Um, scheduling... Yeah. I don't remember what I was going to say. It's very important because you have an allotted time to do certain tasks, right? Um, I like to fill out my tasks um, the night before and try to hit every single task. Um, and it's very rewarding when I, you know, complete all of them. It's very disappointing when I don't. But that's how I like to lay my stuff out. Like I have like a time period and then I have many tasks in between, right? So... From two to six, I have covert productions work, and then in between, I have make a song, uh, edit this video, edit this podcast, release this, um, drop a promo, and that that type of stuff. So I have little little tasks for me to do to stay disciplined. Um, and you structure your schedules a little bit different than I do. So what do you like to do? All right, so so real quick about about schedules, right? So basically, in the book The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, he outlines three parts of a habit, right? And that is cue, response, reward. And if the idea is that if you make a habit that has all three of these, then you will be successful in building that habit. So the daily schedule, the daily routine, perfectly encapsulates these three things. These three things. So the cue is when your brain needs a cue to do an action. All right. So the cue is the cue to to um for the schedule is that you you have a time for every single action. So you can just check your. I have my phone right here. And I have uh, my schedule right on on my, my lock screen. So whatever time it is, I can just check and I can see what habit I'm supposed to be doing at that time. That's the cue. Then the response is the response is actually going out and doing the response. That's like the discipline aspect, right? And so let's say you had uh, exercise in the response. Let's say, let's say it is 7 a.m. and then that's your cue, right? And you see it on your routine. And then the response is you, now you gotta go exercise, right? So basically, if you want to be successful in that, you want to start small, start easy. So we kind of talked about this before, but like you don't want to, I don't think we talked about this actually, but basically you don't want to like start off with something like, like a three hour workout, because if you do that, like you'll just do it once and then you'll just, you'll, your motivation will run out. You know what I'm saying? So you start with your discipline, but discipline is a skill. So you probably have low discipline. So you choose something that's very easy for you. So you would probably start off with like five push ups at 7 a.m. and then like as the days goes on, the weeks goes on, you add more reps, you add more sets and things like that. And then that's it, right? Now, some people will be surprised by this because they'll say five push-ups, three push-ups, that's not going to do anything. And the truth is that's wrong because you're doing zero push-ups first, right? So zero to five is literally like... Is, a, is an infinite, <laughs> yeah, it's infinite it's, percentage. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's an infinite percentage of increase of progress. <laughs> So yes, if you want to be infinitely better at what you do, just do something. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's like, funny. Show I'm, like, up. I'm infinitely better than you. I do one push up every day. Yes, yes. Show show up, right? Yeah. And the thing is, you're gonna be doing this for the rest of your life. If you're trying to like exercise or if you're picking up a skill like drawing, right? Showing up and and just getting those those two minutes in, one minute in. It doesn't matter like that's so small right now because you're gonna be doing it for the rest of your life. So you might as well just plan for that, right? So it's better to just start 
one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, and then a few months later, now you're at five minutes or, or maybe at 10 minutes or 30 minutes, right? So it'll, the time will, will pass, you know what I'm saying? But if you start too too strongly, then you're gonna fall off, right? So you wanna, it'll, it makes sense to to start small. And then that's the, that's the response, right? And then as you, you know, you'll do that, you'll build your discipline. And then the reward is, like we said before, focusing on the process, not the result, right? So the reward is that you did your schedule and you feel good about yourself. So yeah, so that's pretty much how I do mine. I just set it up like every time I have things to do and I just try to get things those things done at the at those times. And it's the a, t- a tip for the daily schedule is the more specific you are, the better. Because when you're not specific, your brain will talk you out of doing things. But when you know what to do, you'll just go and do it. And the final thing about the schedule is that you're going to fall off of it. And that's okay, because like we said before, this is for life, so you got to just get into the habit of getting back onto it. The more, the the faster you get back on of it, the more times you get back on it, the more you're going to be able to, the more it becomes part of your lifestyle, pretty much. So, like, you're so used to just being, like, a, a video gamer, and that's, that's your lifestyle, right? So, it's probably going to, like, go, like, you're going to try to be productive, and then you'll go back to your original routine, right? Back to your original routine. Productive, back, 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 right? But the more you do it, you'll be like this. It'll be like productive, productive, back, productive, productive, back, productive, productive, back. And then eventually it'll be productive, 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 back, productive. You know what I'm saying? Like like that. So yeah. that, again, that's long-term planning and that's long-term change. We don't change overnight. Right. Um, another way to continue to be more disciplined is a habit tracker. I've never used this before, but you have, correct? Yeah, so habit tracker... Honestly, it's kind of like a worse version of a of a schedule, cause uh, that's not what I, that's what I did first. I just tracked um, some mental health health habits like gratitude and exercise and then meditation. And then throughout the day, I would just be like, I'd look at my tracker and be like, oh, I gotta do this, and then I'll go do it. Right. The problem with that is it's not specific, cause they're not saying like you don't have you have to do it at this time, because if you have to do it at this time. There's less resistance. But if it's like, oh, I have the whole day to do it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, then you you push just, it back. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then, and then it's late course. and then you're not going to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And then another thing with habit trackers is it's another habit to build. So if you have a, an app on your phone, you have to get in the habit of opening that app. So some people, like, you're building two habits, right? So if you're trying to track track uh, exercise, it's just like you got to get in the habit of opening your app and, and seeing your your habits and then... And then the exercise habit. So just be wary of that. It's because what happens is I tried a habit tracker before, but I had no investment into it. You know, I didn't I didn't build the habit of checking my habit tracker, so I didn't do any of my habits. So what helped me to actually be successful with the habit tracker is to have a accountability group. So what I did was I created, I had a bunch of my friends. We we used this habit tracker called Habitica. And we all got into like the same kind, same party. So we're all like in a list, and we can we're in a group, like a group chat, pretty much. And we can see what habits we've done. So because I had my friends there, and I invited them there, I was like the leader of that chat. I was definitely signing in every. I signed in every day for like two hundred days straight, and I'm still signing in. I probably missed like one day, but like yeah, it's been like a year. I signed like ninety seven percent of the days into the habit tracker, but all because I had that accountability and people there for me. So accountability, you want to talk about that? So yeah, uh, accountability is uh, an accountability partner or partners is very, very good, specifically for the gym, uh, in my personal experience. Like if you go, like we, we used to do this, right? Last school year, we used to all get in the car and we all go to the gym directly after school, right? Um, and if someone missed the day, you know, everyone would be like, yo, man, what are you doing? No gym today? And we'd all shake our heads, you know, make a little joke out of it, right? It just makes you, it wouldn't make you feel bad, but it make you, like, think about, like, damn, I missed the gym, right? So, you account- accountability partners, it's like, well, he went to the gym or she went to the gym, so I have to go to the gym, right? He worked today, so I worked today. I can't be the loser out of the group, right? So, the accountability partner, it uses, like, the, the one, the competition, and it also uses, like, the shame, uh, like feelings of shame to your advantage, right? Because y- you see your your friend doing something, and you can't feel like like you're the weaker one, so you got to do it too, right? Um, it's like positive peer pressure, you know. Um, so that's why it's good to have an accountability partner. Another thing in my personal experience is whenever I talk to some of my friends, 
um, some like the people that try to start like businesses, they they ask me questions sometimes, and one, it makes me feel good, right? But also, it's important to understand that people view me as a mentor or people view me as someone that they can reach out to to help and if i'm not you know if i don't have my own life together how can i help them right it's like these people have such a high high standard high high sight of me and it's up to me i gotta for, for their sake and for my sake i gotta hold that i can't find the word but i gotta withhold that that image you know so being a leader pretty yes. much will will help you stay it will change your self-image pretty much because you see yourself as someone who is a, is a, is important in this area right and right. then you're gonna commit to that more because a, a lot of this stuff this discipline motivation a lot of this at the end of the day is it's really it is self-image because a person who sees himself as a guy who just goes to the gym all day it's a part of his life you know he's just gonna go to the gym all day it's not gonna be hard i mean he mm -hmm. is disciplined but it's not gonna be hard to to be to do that right to go mm -hmm. to the gym but if, if you're someone who sees yourself as, oh, I'm not even a gym, like, oh, I don't even do this. Like, I'm just, I'm just weak or whatever, is it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, oh, I'm, it's just going to be, it's going to be hard because that's not a part of your life. But you got to see it as a part of your life. And then that discipline will become so much easier. Because that, that's, at the end of the day, that's the whole point. Like, it's not, it's not as, it's not supposed to be that discipline is just super hard. And then you're, you always got to force yourself to go. No, you'll just, it'll get easier and easier over time. That's the point. Yeah. And, you know, with the help of an accountability partner. Like another example, right? I have a group chat as my friends, uh, the only people that I really spent a lot of time with. And we all ended up going to the gym. I convinced some people, I helped some people get to the gym. Some people already started going to the gym before me. But anyway, so we all went to the gym. We had our group chat. And every single day, this one specific person would always text, just finished gymming. It was fun, right? And every time you say that, if I didn't work out that day, I would I, I would feel so inadequate. So I'd be like, okay, now I got to get up. I, I do my stuff. Like if I was ever like thinking of falling off or you know, be like, oh, I'm too busy today, trying to trying to BS and cope, right? I see that text, I'd be like, okay, I gotta go, right? So it's very important to have an accountability partner. Um, I like to tell people that ask me for like a workout schedule, I like to tell them to send me like pictures of them going to the gym every day, right? That way they also have that accountability. Um, so yeah, that's that. That's what you could do to help with your discipline. We got to end soon, right? We're coming up on our time. So I'm going to leave you guys with an assignment, right? Actually, do you want to say anything else before we go? No? All right, cool. So I'm going to leave you guys with the assignment, right? I think I'm going to start doing this for every single episode. Um, so the assignment is every morning, as soon as you wake up, right? I want you to do a number of push-ups, say like 25, 50, depends on how much you can do, right? I want you to do a certain amount of push-ups every single morning to start your day, right? Um, and I want you to do it as soon as you wake up. Like as soon as your feet touch the floor, I want you to drop down to the push-ups. And that's just the start, right? Now, after you start doing that for a while, you're going to get stronger. So, of course, add more push-ups to it. And, you know, eventually it's going to help with your discipline, right? And you can add other stuff to your schedule. But first I want you to do is start with a couple push-ups every morning. So yes, that was uh, our episode. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Under the Cover podcast uh, where we discover the grinds of the young minds. Today's episode was motivation versus discipline. Make sure you guys do the hard work and stay consistent. And we'll see you guys next time. We still don't have an outro. Cover brother time, hee hee.